You may have found yourself eating as little as 1200 calories for an extended period of time, only to lose weight, but then see a stall in weight loss. You're eating the same, you're putting the same amount of effort in, but your weight is not changing and you're getting extremely frustrated. I'm gonna get into exactly how and why this can happen later on in the video, but let's first start by defining metabolism. So metabolism is all the chemical processes going on in the body which converts food into energy. There's thousands of metabolic processes going on in the body at any one time. But for the sake of obviously oversimplifying it, let's just define metabolism as what influences whether you put on weight or lose weight. The Your basic metabolic rate, you, let's just take it all in all. So your TDEE is basically your total daily energy expenditure, and that's the total calories you burn in one day. And that's influenced by how much you move, how much you how much muscle you have, how much fat you have, so your body composition, how much you eat, what you eat, and yeah, just a variety of different things it's influenced by. But the BMR part, the basic metabolic rate, is not something that changes day to day. So that's the, basically the calories you're burning at rest. That's not something that can change day to day. That changes according to your body composition and there's a bunch of other things involved in influencing that. But it's not something that changes day to day. But what we can obviously impact is we can impact our body composition, which can have an impact on your BMR. So as you lose weight, your BMR goes down. It's a very normal response. Metabolic adaptations take place. So you're gonna see an increase in hunger and you're gonna see a loss of energy. Those are very normal adaptations. As we move further away from homeostasis, the body wants to protect you. It's like a survival mechanism. It thinks that maybe, just maybe, you could be on this diet forever. So it wants to protect you and keep you alive. And that's extremely normal. And as we move further and further away from the body set point, basically the weight the body wants to be, so you're, it's different for everyone, we see more of these metabolic adaptations. So for, in, for example, just to put it in very simplistic terms, a metabolic adaptation that could occur would be, say if someone's going from 100 kilos to 85 kilos, they lose 15 kilos, but then their metabolism, metabolism, their BMR goes to someone that's basically of 80 kilos. With metabolic adaptations, the amount of calories you burn at rest will drop. So will the amount of calories burned when you're doing just daily movement, your NEAT, that's non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and that's like I said, daily movement, like walking, just steps, just fidgeting as well, that will all go down, and so will your eat, your exercise activity thermogenesis. The amount of calories burning when you're actually exercising will also drop as well. And there can be some endocrine and hormone alterations, so the increases in hunger via the decreased leptin, and also the amount of calories you burn at rest affected by your hormone profile, what happens to your hormones because of these adaptations. There has been some mixed research on the effects of the calories burnt at rest and how significant they are. And obviously that depends on the composition of your diet, your body composition in general, how long you've been dieting for, how much you move in one day in general, and also how much exercise you do. So all these things can impact it. A recent study by Martin et al. looked at people dieting over the course of eight weeks and actually found adaptations to occur. At, I think it was week nine and week 13, but these adaptations only led to a maximum of 162 calories less burnt a day. So people were burning 162 calories less a day because of these adaptations. While that may sound small, and you might be like, okay, I'm switching this video off, this is nothing. This is, why are you even talking about this? Yes, it's not that much. But then if you factor in the reality that it was only eight weeks, and all these participants had not dieted for three months leading up to the study. So they could have been eating a lot, they could have been moving, like, we don't know what they could have been doing basically, but imagine this continued over a long period of time and the alterations we see in like 
amount of calories you're burning when you're exercising, the amount of calories, you, the sleep, the, the effects on sleep, everything, all these things can have a significant impact. So while obviously we look at this and say, you know, they're not huge, imagine over time, they could potentially be huge. Even if they're not, it's probably better to mitigate these adaptations where possible. And the good news is it's very possible. 2021 review by Gomez and Roberts actually recommended a slow and to moderate approach to fat loss to maximize fat loss. That sounds almost counterproductive, but this minimizes any metabolic adaptations that may occur by assisting the preservation of lean muscle mass. And speaking of lean muscle mass, talk about protein. So protein, keeping protein levels adequate to high, I'd say high, but adequate in terms of supporting your goals here is going to be key. So obviously we know, well, we know from what I've said in, earlier in the video, and you may know from before as well, that when hunger increases, you're going to want to eat more. <laughs> so protein is not only satiating, it will also help the preservation of lean muscle mass as well. So when it preserves lean muscle mass, it will help keep your BMR elevated. Even if it's only slightly, it will help increase it that tiny bit even. And it's got a higher thermic effect of food. So if you combine the fact that it's supporting muscle growth with the thermic effect of food, that's the amount of energy burn uh, digesting that food basically. So you combine those two, even at a small, everything's gonna add up here and protein is key to preserving, building, and yeah, well I said preserving, so that's maintaining lean muscle mass. So what it recommends, well what the research recommends, research actually recommends probably about between, I'd say between 16 to 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight. And obviously, if you're on a larger side of things, you probably want to go on the lower end of that because if you're weighing three, if you're, no, 300 kilos, if you're weighing about 130 or 115 kilos, then to times that by 2.2, that's, yeah, that's going to be a too much protein probably for you. So just go on the lower end of that. But that's the first thing you can do if you're not doing it already, that is. This is probably music to your ears, but implementing diet breaks. So let's look at the oh so famous Matador study, 2017 Matador study by Byron et al. So this looked at people who dieted continuously or people who took diet breaks. And those that dieted continuously dieted over two, uh, sorry, over 16 weeks. Those who implemented diet breaks did two weeks at the equivalent calorie deficit followed by two weeks at maintenance. And those who took the diet breaks actually lost significantly more weight. But that was, it was over 30 weeks. It did take longer, but they lost more weight. And also, you've got to look at the fact that, they, that those breaks are more realistic for you to take, more than likely. You could be someone that's taking it very seriously and wants to compete or whatnot, and maybe dieting consistently is going to be more for you. But diet breaks... It doesn't have to be two weeks on, two weeks off. Lane Norton actually recommends two weeks on and one week off. First of all, you complete that in less time. I'm not sure how comparable the fat loss will be, but that's the process he recommends. And the good news is you can, you know, you begin to be eating a lot more two weeks after. So you, you actually look forward to it. And I'm pretty sure it will um, increase adherence, but the likelihood is that it prevented those metabolic adaptations we've spoken about from taking place. Well, there's obviously going to be some metabolic adaptations, but limiting them is always key. Make sure you're eating a diet that consists of a lot of fruit and vegetables. That's going to contain the fiber that's going to keep you fuller longer and also increase the volume of your food is going to be more satisfied with your meals. It's going to help you stick to the plan a lot easier. Also track your steps steps even not steaks before you go on a diet and try and maintain those while you're on a diet because what happens is a lot of the time when neat goes down you're moving less and your steps go down and obviously you're going to be burning more burning less calories throughout the day and that's gonna that's not going to be good so you want to make sure you maintain those those steps make sure you maintain the movement and also resistance training is going to promote mu muscle mass promote lean mass gains and that's going to be favored over cardio 
and other forms of training because you're going to be promoting and building lean muscle mass at least at the very least maintaining lean muscle mass and that's going to keep your BMR sl slightly elevated even sl we'll take slightly here even and though if you follow all those tips everything we've discussed in this video and like I said make sure you're resistance training follow a progressive plan that's going to support muscle growth you're gonna prevent a lot of those adaptations, but make sure, obviously, before you think you've got metabolic adaptations, make sure you're actually tracking, make sure you know what you're eating. Because if you don't know what you're eating, you're just guessing, the chances are you could be overeating, the chances are you probably are overeating, but if you're not and you know you're not, just follow the protocol in this video and stick, stick with that for a while. Remember, be patient as well and i almost forgot the last one there's this myth around eating little and often is going to promote your metab metabolism that is a complete myth so you don't have to be eating six to seven meals a day some research actually suggests that it could have the opposite effects could could actually have negative effects on a metabolism so like I said, follow, follow those steps. Any questions at all, comment below. If there's any video you would like to see, any topic you'd like to see covered, comment below or send me a, a DM. And if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, click that subscribe button. I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. And until the next video, keep pushing those limits.